I'm James Lambden from Analog Shift. Today we're gonna look at mechanical watches and who's wearing them. John Mayer. John is an avid wristwatch collector who has all kinds of neat stuff, vintage, contemporary, has a focus on vintage Rolex and modern Patek Philippe. In this image, we've got him wearing a 5170 white gold chronograph. This is really the star mechanical chronograph of Patek's current line. A chronograph is basically a stopwatch for your wrist. It allows the keeping of time, but it also allows you to measure a secondary event, whether that's racing on a vehicle or, you know, just how long it's taking at the DMV and you find yourself timing stuff all the time just by pressing a button. It's a very classical piece and it has applied Breguet indices, which is a, a font that's been used for hundreds of years in pocket watches and wrist watches alike. The other image here is the 5164 Travel Time Aquanaut, which is the big brother of this watch here. It has a second time zone, but is ultimately the same style of sporty steel paddock. The Aquanaut in question here might have a retail price of under $50,000, but with the Tiffany & Company signature, it's probably worth close to three times that on the secondary market. So a double sign watch means that it has the name of the manufacturer on the dial, but it also has the name of a retailer. In this case, Tiffany & Company is the legendary jeweler, and when you have a Tiffany & Company signature uh, on your Patek Philippe, it adds extra exclusivity and value, but actually doesn't increase the price at retail. The secondary market, on the other hand, is an entirely different story. So John Mayer is a real horological enthusiast, collecting a wide variety of things, as well as this absolutely bonkers concept chron chronograph with a white strap, which uh, is part of their sort of forward-looking, almost experimental line. When you have an open-worked dial, it's uh, another word would be skeletonized, you can see the inner workings of the movement. Here it's fitted in a titanium case that's massively oversized and fitted on a sport strap. Ed Sheeran is an absolute horological fanatic. Like John Mayer, he's, his tastes are varied. He's got vintage and contemporary, but he's probably best known for his love of Patek Philippe. Here we have Ed wearing the reference 2499, which is considered by many of the most elite wristwatch collectors to be one of the finest chronograph perpetual calendars ever made. This is a vintage watch and he went to great lengths to get this. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece of history and design. Essentially, a perpetual calendar will tell you all of the things you need to know about what day, week, month, phase of the moon is going on right now without ever having to change or set it. It is one of the most sought after and horologically significant complications in the entire lineup with only one thing surpassing it and Ed has one of those too. Here, Ed is wearing the mother of all watches. This is the Patek Philippe reference 5208P, grand complication. So what we have here is a perpetual calendar and the addition of a mono pusher chronograph, which is activated start, stop, and reset from a single button instead of two like you'd find on a normal stopwatch chronograph. And last but not least, it has a minute repeater. When activated, it will chime the hours and minutes of the time, just like an old grandfather clock. This is unbelievable, absolutely insane, and the best of the best. Jay-Z is a legendary rapper. I'm sure you've all heard of him. And also his taste for watches is also legendary. Here we've got him wearing a Rolex Day-Date with a black dial and a smooth bezel. The Rolex Day-Date is really the flagship of Rolex's dress and luxury collection. Unlike a date just, which has just a date, the day date has the date and the day. The word iconic is thrown around probably too much in the wristwatch industry, but the Rolex day date is without question one of the most identifiable and iconic watches of all time. It is a sign of success, it is a sign of taste, and it has a nickname president for a reason. And of course, Jay also has a Richard Mill. This is an RM56, which has been customized totally with a blue sapphire case, uh, which reportedly took 3,000 hours to make and cost about two and a half million dollars. I guess if you've got it and you wanna customize something that's already incredibly rare, this is how you do it. Jay also has an appreciation for the classics. This is probably the most interesting watch in Jay-Z's collection. This is a Rolex Datejust from the 1980s. 
in solid gold. And frankly, by itself, that doesn't lend itself to being anything terribly special. But this particular watch is a piece unique. It was modified by legendary designer Frank Muller, who is also the namesake of his own brand, in the 1980s. He took this date just, he ripped out its guts, and he built a totally custom perpetual calendar, made his own dial for this watch, and put it all together. I'm not quite sure how it ended up in Jay's hands, or on his wrist, so to speak, but my God, that is a very, very special watch, and it shows just what you can do with a little bit of mechanical ingenuity and design. Spectacular. Jake is wearing the 2018 Cartier Santos. This is the full-size model in 18 karat solid gold. This is a magnificent reinterpretation of one of the most historically significant Cartier designs. This is a small, thin, precious metal dress wash. But would you believe it started out as the first pilot's watch? This watch features a brilliantly designed integrated bracelet that is removable without the use of tools. Using your fingers, you can pull the bracelet off by unlocking integrated clasps. It is ultra thin, automatic, and, and absolutely stunning. Here, Jake is wearing the steel midsize version. I actually prefer the midsize. I bought a midsize when I bought mine. Here it's just completely steel. It's a great value as well. It's uh, I think about $7,000. It offers, I think, a lot of horological and design chops in a versatile package that could be used for dress uh, or for daily wear alike. Fantastic watch. Ryan Gosling is a man after my own heart and not just because he's so handsome. Here we have uh, Ryan wearing a vintage Rolex Air King. And the Air King is really the absolute lowest slot in Rolex's sort of uh, collection. If you're looking for something that has character and style and patina and oozes this romantic ideal of what this watch has been through, this is it. This particular watch probably dates to the 1950s or 60s. Uh, it is 34 millimeter size, which is a little small by today's standards, but wears brilliantly on a variety of wrist sizes, depending on how you strap it up on a bracelet or, or a leather strap. Ultimately, this is sort of all you need, and I think Ryan is sort of proving minimalism is also very effective. Here, uh, Offset is wearing a RM11 chronograph from Richard Mill, sort of a classic uh, entry-level chronograph in the Richard Mill collection. This is a RM1101 as well. This one is a Roberto Mancini edition, but it also has been iced out with aftermarket gem setting. In short, taking a factory watch and then taking it to a jeweler or, or craftsman who is applying additional uh, gem setting and doing additional precious stones onto the watch totally sets him apart. Here we have Offset wearing a very interesting watch. While at first glance, this uh, Royal Oak appears to be gem set, it's not. It's what AP calls frosted gold. It's actually a factory case finishing in which an individual hand finishes a Florentine pattern into a white gold case, basically making it sparkle. These things are amazing to behold, and while it isn't a precious stone, it is a precious metal, and there's a beautiful, shimmery, almost snow-like effect to these watches. This is a really neat watch. It's almost AP's way of responding to everyone who went and got aftermarket diamonds fitted. They said, well, you don't need diamonds. We can make this thing sparkle just using the gold. Magnificent. And here, Offset is wearing a Rolex Datejust Pearl Master. And believe it or not, this thing is completely factory. There's no appearances to me of any type of aftermarket fitting. It has an unusual bracelet that differs from the standard oyster bracelet. It has a sunburst dial, and it has this really cool gem set bezel. This is a pretty neat watch, and not something you see every day really doesn't need anything. It's perfect the way it left the factory. Quavo is wearing a Royal Oak Chronograph. This is usually a 39 to 41 millimeter size. Looks to be rose gold, completely fitted with diamond setting. Iced out to the max. Looks really good. The workmanship on, on this particular iced out AP it impresses me immediately just for the subtlety in its and the way that the stones are set into the case, they look 
perfectly set. Oftentimes with shoddy work, you see some extra slag and gold material coming off the sides, but all of these seem to be fit really, really expertly. Adding expensive things does not necessarily mean your watch is worth more. If it's done poorly or you use uh, shoddy workmanship, you can take a watch that had inherent value and destroy it by having it modified. My advice to anybody who's looking at modifying a wristwatch is to go ahead and do it. Just make sure it's done well and make sure that it is for you. Takeoff style is a little different than the other band members in Migos and a little bit more restrained, I'd say. He's wearing a Rolex Cellini. This is a Rolex that even Rolex people don't usually know anything about. This particular model appears to be rose gold and also has a moon phase indicator. This is a really interesting sort of non-Rolex Rolex. It's very much a Rolex, but it's not what you would picture if I said the word Rolex. For that reason, I think the Cellini line, which is diverse and has all kinds of different materials and shapes and complications, is sort of one of the undersung uh, beauties of the modern watch collecting lineup. Rami Malek. Rami is a big fan of Cartier, and what we have him wearing here is the Cartier Tank American. This is a slightly different style than the classic Tank Louis Cartier, which was actually fashioned to look like the profile of a World War I French battle tank. The Tank American is also a tank design that it has elongated sides that taper into these lugs at the end where you fit the, the strap on, but the actual central carriage is slightly more rectangular and the whole case is slightly curved, making it a truly black tie worthy dress watch. It has very classical design elements for the Cartier brand, including the blue sapphire cabochon crown and blued steel hands. These are hands that are actually blued over an open flame by an, ar by an artist one at a time and if you overcook it, so to speak, you lose the color and you have to start again. So there's a real handcrafted nature to what has ultimately become one of the most prevalent dress watch models. Kanye West, he is wearing a Cartier Crash. This is a very interesting watch. As legend goes, drew its inspiration from a Cartier wristwatch that was burned in a car crash and was returned to Cartier for repair where the designers took a look at it and saw this art form in its mangled shape. The Cartier crash has been made a few times. This is a very particularly early one with a London sign dial and has gradually been made occasionally in production, always selling out, always being in demand. The Cartier crash is simply one of those watches that looks unlike anything else and also proves that the French have a sense of humor. Great watches can be had at any price point. We're talking a lot about some very high-end and customized stuff today, but if you have an interest in mechanical watches, there are great options at virtually every price point, starting with a few hundred dollars and up. The best piece of advice I can give to anybody who's interested in getting into mechanical wristwatches is to learn as much as you can. Find somebody to help you read about them, but also wear them and see how they make you feel. These are things that we don't need but there are things that have authenticity and have story and can really make you feel a certain way. So try them on, learn about them, and have fun with it. 